July 20th, 1976, shortly after midnight, Pacific Daylight Time, the NASA Viking 1 lander separates from the orbiter and begins its descent to Chrysi Planitia, the plane of gold on the planet of Mars. It is an unprecedented engineering feat, a 460 million mile journey through space, followed by a soft landing in uncertain terrain. Because radio signals from Earth, even traveling at the speed of light, take 20 minutes to cross the void, the Mars landing must be directed by the lander's own onboard computer. From now until touchdown, the lander is on its own. Back on Earth, the Viking Project team begins an anxious vigil. Many of these people have devoted 10 years of their professional careers to a project with no assurance of success. Attention builds as several centuries of philosophic conjecture and scientific thought reach their culmination. The red planet is an old friend. The fourth planet from the sun, our next door neighbor in the solar system, and the subject of man's earliest celestial observations. It was named for the Roman god of war. Its similarities to Earth have long intrigued us. It's the same age. It's made of similar stuff. It's a terrestrial planet, and like Earth, has polar ice caps and seasons. And though the Martian year is 686 days, the Martian day is almost the same length as Earth's, revolving every 24 hours and 37 minutes. In 1610, Galileo was the first to see Mars through a telescope. In 1657, Christian Huygens drew this first sketch. In 1784, William Herschel noticed the advance and recession of the polar caps from winter to summer and concluded they were water ice and snow. In 1877, Giovanni Schiaparelli saw linear patterns he called canali. In 1895, Percival Lowell, the noted American astronomer, became convinced that Mars had intelligent life. He called them Martians, and believed they had built an elaborate system of canals, which he sketched from observation. He thought the seasonal color changes were caused by vegetation. It was Lowell who sparked the golden age of science fiction. In the light of 20th century science, the myth faded rapidly. George Eliot Hale at the Mount Wilson Observatory could not confirm any canals. In 1965, NASA sent Mariner 4 to take our first close-up pictures. They revealed a forbidding, cratered surface, much like our moon. In 1969, Mariner 7 flew over the southern polar cap with two infrared detectors confirming a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and a polar cap of dry ice. In 1973, Three years later, remarkable pictures from Mariner 9 showed that in the past there had been a time of intense volcanic activity and that water had once flowed on the Martian surface. Though hopes for the little green men were long since gone, speculation about microscopic life remained strong. Only a landing could answer the remaining questions. And so, two identical spacecraft were launched separately for an 11-month journey to Mars. Once in the Martian orbit, the spacecraft would certify the landing site. It would separate into an orbiter and a lander. The orbiter would be the communications link between the lander and Earth. 
It would also map the planet photographically. From the surface, the lander would send back pictures, take atmospheric and soil samples, and collect data on meteorology, seismology, and soil chemistry. The Langley Research Center managed the project. Martin Marietta Corporation built the landers. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory built the orbiters. JPL was responsible for tracking and communication through its deep space network. This is the Mission Control Center at JPL. A NASA contractor team of 10,000 was involved. On that morning of July 20th, at 5.10 a.m., we all breathed a little easier. Thirty-four minutes later, the first pictures started coming in. successfully then a functioning automated laboratory and six weeks later we would do it again on september 3rd the viking 2 lander touched down at a northern location called utopia panicia the pictures the landers sent back revealed a bleak world rocky desolate drier than the driest desert on earth Water could not exist in liquid form on the surface. The leading question, though, was, could life exist in any form? Both landers were equipped to find out. Each had a robotic arm that scooped up soil samples and placed them in a highly sophisticated automated biology laboratory packed into a space the size of a shoebox. The samples were tested for the existence of life. In the mass spectrometer, they were also tested for organic molecules of any kind. We found no evidence of life, nor organic chemistry. And we found out why. The Martian atmosphere, only one hundredth as dense as ours, offers no protection from the sun's ultraviolet rays. Even organic molecules, which are common in the cosmos, were not present. The surface of Mars is believed to be sterile now. As for past eons, the search for fossilized evidence will have to await another mission.